With the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the threat of nuclear war has increased several fold. China is in overdrive with expansion of its nuclear arsenal. So the new US intercontinental nuclear ballistic missile, the LGM-35 Sentinel, is a crucial defense program. It's not being dragged around the media headlines nearly as much as the F-35, the B-21 bomber or the Ford aircraft carrier. But it's potentially just as important, and cost-wise it's just as expensive than most of those. Its development so far has shown issues in the US missile industrial base. Those will almost certainly manifest themselves in a very steep price tag, going over a hundred billion dollars for the whole program. This video will explain what Sentinel is, how it compares to the old missile, and it will put its costs into context. Finally, the video will dive into the strategic context of Sentinel and nuclear arsenals around the world, and show why failure to fill the Sentinel is not really an option for the US. Sentinel is the next generation intercontinental ballistic missile that will deliver nuclear warheads to US's enemies, should a nuclear war ever happen. It's also to serve as a deterrent to adversaries, sending a message of, look, we too have a fairly modern and capable ICBM that you won't have an easy time dealing with, so don't try anything funny. But the key word there is fairly modern and capable, and that's the controversial bit. For all its cost, which is likely to be upward of a hundred billion just to procure all the missiles and upward of a quarter of a trillion to operate them over 50 years, the US Air Force is not really getting a superbly capable, better than anything else kind of a system. Instead, all that money is merely buying a mediocre ICBM that's in some ways behind other countries' ICBMs even today, let alone in 2030 when it's supposed to become operational. The Sentinel will be used from the existing ICBM silos that the US Air Force operates. Currently, the US operates some 450 silos in three separate vast silo fields. There, it deploys 400 Minuteman 3 ICBMs, which means some silos are currently empty, but maintained. Minuteman 3 is an old missile design. It started development in mid-1960s, being based on even older Minuteman versions. Most changes focused on a new third stage and a new re-entry vehicle system. There were some other updates to the missile since then too. But now in the 2020s, we're talking about the 50 year plus old system. By the time Sentinel comes, it will be 60 years old. US Strategic Command described the GBSD program which gave birth to the Sentinel as having three goals. To improve upon the Minuteman 3 in range, payload and accuracy. Previously, nuclear weapons treaties made large missiles with many warheads not very cost-effective. But with nuclear arsenals shrinking overall, there is again merit to fielding missiles with many warheads. The current US silos could support larger missiles too, as they were engineered with such an option in mind. Actually, near the end of the Cold War, the US had a newer ICBM deployed in existing silos, the Peacekeeper, which was a larger and a more capable missile. But due to the cost and perceived lack of need, those were retired after just 20 years of service. So now the Sentinel is coming and it's not really some large, super capable missile. While exact dimensions haven't been disclosed, everything known so far is pointing to a missile smaller than the Peacekeeper and to a missile only slightly larger than the Minuteman 3. Currently, due to the treaties, some Minuteman 3s carry one nuclear warhead each but they were designed for up to three warheads. The Sentinel, according to the US Air Force, will be similar. It will nominally field one warhead, but will be designed for up to three. Compare that to the larger Peacekeeper, which was designed for up to 12 nuclear warheads. Roughly comparable in size to the Sentinel, the Russian Yars missile carries up to four warheads, though Russia has even larger ICBMs carrying more. China's DF-41 missile may also be more capable due to its size. Its warhead count is at least three, but as it's essentially unknown, it could easily be more. Now, a 3D rendering of the Sentinel has been released by the US Air Force, and it shows a configuration somewhat similar to Minuteman 3 one. Instead of a missile like the Peacekeeper, which has the uniform diameter for all its stages, the Sentinel seems to have progressively smaller diameters for its three stages. 
If that ends up being true, it will explain why the warhead count is described as up to 3 with the final stage likely being similar in diameter to Minuteman 3 stage, and the middle stage possibly being as wide as the Minuteman's first stage. Minuteman 3 had the same diameter for its middle and final stage. That might imply that the first stage of the Sentinel might actually be wider than that of the Minuteman 3. That being said, Minuteman 3 is a fairly small missile, so it's likely the first stage is still nowhere as wide as Peacekeepers, and likely closer in width to the Russian and Chinese missiles. Now, all this talk about stages and width is important because of the following. Chemistry of rocket motors can only improve so much, and in fact, it did not really revolutionize in these last 50 years. So to get a bigger payload on a missile, or to make the same payload go farther, larger rocket motors are a must. What seems plausible so far is that Sentinel will indeed offer some improvement in range and payload over the Minuteman 3, but it will be small. Certainly not comparable to Peacekeeper's figures. When comparing ranges, it's important to remember it's always payload at range, so when certain sources say Peacekeeper had a range of 6000 miles and Minuteman 3 had a range of 8000 miles, keep in mind that Peacekeeper is doing that with 4 to 12 times bigger payload and possibly on a quicker, more depressed trajectory. Unlike with the Peacekeeper, which was optimized against the Soviet Union, which was fairly close just over the North Pole, the new missile does need longer reach, as now China is also an adversary. While payload may seem similar, with both Sentinel and Minuteman 3 carrying up to three warheads, not all warheads are delivered the same way. Sentinel will be using a W87-1 warhead, similar to the W87 warhead used on some of the Minutemans. But that new variant will still require a new manufacture of the entire warhead, and the National Nuclear Security Administration estimated back in 2018 the costs of production of new warheads to be between 8 and 15 billion dollars. And the warhead itself needs a re-entry vehicle, which is also new. Total re-entry vehicle cost was estimated by the Air Force at 3 billion back in 2018. By the end of development, that figure is sure to rise. Both the warhead and re-entry vehicle cost is money on top of the missile development cost. The bus holding the re-entry vehicles may be part of the missile budget. The bus is very likely to hold new types of decoys, possibly in greater numbers. That may also account for the greater total payload goal, despite the warhead count remaining the same. US commander of Air Force Global Strike Command said Minuteman 3 will have a difficult time surviving in future enemy airspace environments, which seems to imply new, more advanced countermeasures are quite likely. There is no word on Sentinel's precision, but there is this tidbit from the Navy's modern Mark V re-entry vehicle. Allegedly, it was made to be so precise that it can hit inside a crater left by the same type of warhead launched earlier. Other claims specifically mentioned 30 feet precision. Besides a new generation inertial stabilization guidance and GPS, the re-entry vehicle uses flap-based steering for continuous accuracy improvements. Something similar is very likely for the Sentinel's re-entry vehicle, which would also increase the weight, meaning payload. Another big improvement that Sentinel will bring is the longevity of its rocket fuel. Older technology in Minuteman 3 meant its fuel would go bad, so to say, and those missiles had to be refueled every 20 years. Sentinel's rocket motors will be made to last through at least 2070, meaning 40 years. Now, some do wonder why the US even needs silo-based ICBMs. After all, it also has 14 Ohio-class submarines. It also has nuclear-tipped free-fall bombs and cruise missiles, delivered by aircraft. In concert with large ICBMs, such as Sentinels, those all form the nuclear triad. But by the 2030s, the US is on course to have fewer ready-to-fire submarine-launched missiles. From today's 220 missiles or so that the Pentagon maintains ready, to likely fewer than 170. Most aircraft that might try to deliver bombs are not likely to make it to the enemy. Many bombers using standoff cruise missiles might be destroyed before they take off. So those 400 to 450 operational silos are quite crucial to the US nuclear numbers. Even if each Sentinel carries just three warheads, while the Navy's Trident missile carries up to eight warheads. In theory, Trident could carry 12 smaller warheads, 
but in practice more decoys and countermeasures are preferred alongside real warheads. So why silo usage? Because it's cheapish. The Air Force said commonality with Minuteman 3 will be retained to control costs wherever possible. That means retaining silos and much of other infrastructure, and silo usage in itself is cheaper than using mobile launcher vehicles. And while some may say that silos due to their fixed and known location are vulnerable, the cost and vulnerability equation has changed over the decades. Recon satellites have skyrocketed in numbers, with both the US and China now being able to get hourly revisit times on pretty much any place on Earth. With AI image recognition, it's plausible that soon individual missile launcher vehicles might be tracked more often than not. Given their lack of defenses and hardening, those will be less survivable than silo-based solutions. At the same time, early warning sensors, also on satellites, have gotten better, to the point that missile launched are tracked from the very moment they start their flight. So the ICBMs will most likely be fired in retaliation even before they can be attacked. Using a mobile launcher vehicle doesn't bring as many benefits as it did 30 years ago, while it's just as expensive as it was. So it's no wonder that Russia is at least maintaining the number of their missile silos, if not slightly increasing their number. And China has famously switched from a nuclear arsenal where it had 20 silo-based missiles and maybe 30 road mobile ones, to one where it will have three times more silos than road mobile launchers. Initially, cost projections for the Sentinel project were somewhat reasonable. Back in 2015, total cost to develop and procure missiles, and to put them in service, was some $62 billion. But that figure rose very quickly. Just a year later, in 2016, US Air Force Secretary Frank Handel said inflation assumptions and defense industry ability to produce the missiles are major sources of cost uncertainty, end quote. An $85 billion price tag placeholder was given out, as an estimate. In order to keep the costs down, the US Air Force did not want to develop new technologies for the system. Program manager Colonel Heath Collins said his team looked long and hard at the state of the industry today, and found technology that already meets requirements, so the Sentinel will be integrating existing technologies. Ultimately, Northrop Grumman won the contest to develop Sentinel by default in 2020, after other contestants withdrew from the competition. Boeing justified their withdrawal with unfavorable program requirements. The thing is, the US rocket motor industrial base shrunk quite a bit in the last several decades. ATK Company, which Northrop Grumman bought in 2018, itself bought many other smaller rocket motor developers earlier, leaving the likes of Boeing with few quality rocket motor companies to work with. For example, ATK had bought two out of three makers of rocket motors that worked on the Minuteman 3 and Peacekeeper rocket motors. The remaining experienced US rocket motor maker, Aerojet Rocketdyne, lacks large diameter solid fuel rocket motor experience. It specializes in liquid fuel rocket motors, which are suboptimal for ICBMs. The US didn't use such rocket motors for ICBMs in the last 60 years. Aerojet is Northrop's subcontractor on Sentinel and is building the third stage rocket motor for the Sentinel, as well as the post-boost propulsion system for precise steering of the payload bus. Northrop Grumman, through ATK, is making the first and second stage engines. By 2020, Pentagon's cost estimate for development and procurement of Sentinels rose to $96 billion. The Office of the Secretary of Defense Projects estimated that the entire life cycle cost of the Sentinel which might extend into 2070s, might cost $264 billion. Trying to explain the constant cost rises, Secretary of the Air Force Deborah Lee said, We have not done a cost estimate of this type for probably more than 40 years. The data everybody is using to estimate costs is somewhat dated, as we haven't done it in so long. End quote. While the Sentinel was at times criticized by the US Parliament, a 2021 vote did go fairly smoothly, enjoying bipartisan support as there's really no other serious option but to go through with the Sentinel. While some had at one point said the Air Force should use Navy's Trident ICBMs, that was rejected as that would require costly infrastructure and safety modifications. Plus a single model missile for both Navy and the Air Force poses a long-term industrial base and availability risk. Some also said Minuteman 3 should just be refurbished and modernized, 
but the Air Force claimed such a move would actually cost $38 billion more than to field a new missile. That may be because refurbishing old designs is not easy. Most of the people working on those old missiles have died by now. US Strategic Command said in 2021 that Minuteman 3 is so old that some of its drawings and schematics simply don't exist anymore. Basically, some of the institutional knowledge has been lost, however bewildering that may sound. That's partly the reason why Sentinel is not gonna be a big step up in capability over the Minuteman 3. The knowledge to pull off a much more capable missile on time and on budget may simply not be there anymore. And the Air Force is hard pressed for both time and money. Sentinel was to be ready by 2029 when the first nine missiles were scheduled to be deployed. The last of the currently planned missiles are to be deployed in 2036. The overall missile buy will include additional missiles for testing and maintenance scheduling. Overall, 659 missiles are to be procured. So far, delays have been small. Mid-2030 is the current initial deployment date. First flight test was supposed to be in 2023, but now it obviously slipped to 2024. Ideally, low-rate production is to start in 2026. And in 2029, testing will be completed. As the 2030 initial deployment date comes, full-rate production would ideally start the same year. But as we know, schedules and plans are there to be squashed. US Air Force Secretary Kendall said in November 2023 that Sentinel program is honestly struggling a bit. Head of Air Force Global Strike Command Colin Connor said that Northrop and the Air Force continue to refine the cost estimates, admitting that initial estimates were likely too low. Indeed, in December 2023, Bloomberg published an article where its sources estimated a 50% cost increase is possible, bringing the missile development, procurement and fielding budget to $117 billion. In the article, Andrew Hunter, Air Force's acquisition chief, said, we're in a different world now than when program costs and schedules were set. Even without the re-entry vehicle and warhead costs, it's looking likely Sentinel will easily go over 100 billion. To put that in context, there are few costlier Pentagon programs. By 2017, the F-35 program cost little over 400 billion, but that's an outlier. Nothing else comes close in cost. The Ford Carrier program is currently nearing 60 billion dollars, but that's with just four ships accounted for. Each additional ship may cost 13 billion more. Columbia submarines that the Navy is developing were in 2021 projected to cost some 110 billion for 12 boats. The B-21 stealth bomber has its real costs classified, but the 2021 Bloomberg article cited the Air Force acquisition chief mentioning a 114 billion 30 year sustainment estimate. That's on top of an estimated 25 billion to develop and 64 billion to buy 100 bombers. So the Sentinel ICBM is right there alongside those mega expensive and hugely important strategic programs. It's just too bad that the system itself seems to be warmed over tech from the years past. For the money spent, Sentinel could have and perhaps should have been a bigger step in capability compared to its adversaries. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.